course. Sir George Parr, uh, you are an investment banker. Yes, but before you get too abusive, I'd just like to say <laughs> that um, uh, my position uh, at my bank is that, because of my long experience in the city, is that of a non-executive director. And what does that mean, non-executive? Uh, it means I don't do very much, so none of it's my fault. <laughs> Yes, of course, it's well known that your bank has behaved in an extremely reckless uh, manner. Shouldn't your job be moderating that influence? Oh, well, yes. I mean, I, I did that very, very rig rigorously. I, I, I kept a, um, a, a scrutiny mm -hmm. on the activities of the board. You did? Yes. How was that? Well, I'd go to the chief executive and I'd say, are we going to make a lot of money next year? And he'd say yes, and I'd say jolly good. <laughs> But in fact, the bank isn't going to make a lot of money this year, well, is it? I, I, well, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. The Treasury have hired us to try and find investors for the £200 billion worth of debt they're going to sell this year, so we'll make some money out of that. Yes. It didn't occur to you to do it for nothing, since most of this £200 billion was for bailing out the banks. No, for nothing? No, <laughs> no, good heavens, certainly not. No, no, and to give the government um, its due, uh, it does uh, recognise that it, um, it shouldn't be in the day-to-day -day running of the bank. It should leave banking uh, generally to the private sector, because the private sector have, uh, has made uh, so much, such a big success of it in, yes. in the last few years. The fact is that bankers are wealth creators and politicians are not. Well, can you still argue that bankers are wealth creators? Um, yes, yes uh, I, I, I'll, give you, I'll give you an example. Um, in 2008, at the height of the banking crisis, the American investment bank Merrill Lynch announced, or was about to announce, uh, losses of $26.7 billion for the year. And it just took on an executive at that time, a man called Peter Krauss, who'd come from Goldman Sachs. Uh, he joined uh, Merrill Lynch, and three months later he left Merrill Lynch to go to another company. And for the three months he was there, Merrill Lynch paid him $24.9 million. Now, if that's not wealth creation, I don't know what is. <laughs> and you're saying a politician couldn't do that? So, of course, certainly not. I mean, uh, uh, Jackie Smith and her whole family would have to watch pornographic videos for 30,000 years. <laughs> to be able to claim anything like that much. Yes, it does rather sound as though the bankers haven't learnt very much. Well, I don't know. The, ch the chairman of, uh, of Goldman Sachs, as we were talking about them, said that he realised now that uh, Wall Street payment uh, systems were greedy and self-serving. Well, it sounds as though he at least has learnt his lesson. Uh, there's, apart from the fact that he's uh, set aside 50% of the first quarter revenues to pay for the executive bonus fund, but uh, the old habits die hard. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the bank that took $10 billion from the American taxpayer. The American ta but bi British banks are, are, of course, much better in that respect. Mm -hmm. And um, our banks, certainly our commercial banks, have adapted extraordinarily well to the new situation. Have they? Yes. I mean, overnight, virtually, they went from uh, lending 125% mortgages to not lending any at all. <laughs> And from being very much in debt to keeping all the money the government gave them. You see, it's <laughs> a very, very mature uh, approach. But still, the banking sector has been hit very hard. I mean, people have lost their jobs. Oh, yes, it's very tragic, yes. Very, very uh, well-qualified bankers have had to take menial jobs. Like uh, teaching in school. Uh, school teaching, yes. And I have heard of, of, of former bankers who, for example, teaching physics classes about gravity, and they do it by opening the windows and throwing the children out of the window <laughs> to see whether they go down or up. Well, they like the market. Like the market, yes. yes. And the whole class um, uh, takes bets on it again, like like the market. I see. Though there have been some job losses in mm. the financial sector, most of them have been junior posts, haven't mm. they? Not uh, not people like you. Yes, but the government are very uh, keen that uh, senior people like me should retain control. Because they rely on your expertise. No, we don't have any expertise. They rely on the fact that if something goes wrong, they've got somebody else to blame. <laughs> Uh, but as such, you see, we, we do a, a great public service because they think we're, we're villains. I see. Uh, so everyone hates you? Everyone hates us and they feel better for doing so. <laughs> I know, in fact, that you, you will say that uh, we still go on earning a lot of money. But it is very essential that the bank has gone earning a lot of money. If the bank has suffered financially, the public might feel that their anger was not quite justified 
You see, you see, what, you see what I mean? But if they, and if they feel, if they may think they want us to pay the price, but they don't really. <laughs> because if the bankers lost all their money, then ordinary people would go start looking for somewhere else to blame, and then eventually they blame themselves for, you know, borrowing too much and spending too much and living in too expensive houses. You see, and if they start doing that, then they, they end up more miserable than they were to start with. So, we are doing a great thing for the public health and <laughs> the mental health of, the, of this country. I mean, I don't know, I think we should get tax breaks, not be taxed more. <laughs> But what about the people outside the finance uh, mm. sector? They're, they're losing their jobs, aren't they? And, and so they're much worse off than oh, you. No, 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 they're not. No, I mean, take an office drudge who earns well, £15,000 a year. If he loses his job, he loses £15,000. If my bonus goes down from two and a half million to a million, I've lost a million and a half. Now, he'd have to work for a hundred years to earn what I've lost <laughs> in six months. You're asking for a level playing field. Level playing field. And, of course, there are other, there are other important things, uh, too. I mean, the bankers haven't just ruined the economy. They've, they've given people the opportunity to think about something other than money. You see, to, to reassess their values. Yes, reassess their values, you see. But you wouldn't say that the community is reflected very much in the boardroom, would you? Because no. most members of the boardroom are, are white, Mm. Male, knighted people. Yes, yes. Well, I, 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 I do rather agree with you. I wouldn't object to the board of my bank being more effective of society as a whole. Uh, what about women? Would you? Well, uh, <laughs> a woman. Yes, I, uh, I, I wouldn't mind having something nice to look at during meetings. <laughs> you know, take my mind off the balance sheet. Yes. And this may be going a long way too far, but. Uh, Ethnic minorities? Oh, why not? No, the odd darky. We're very, <laughs> very good person. I mean, he'd have to leave his knife and his drugs at the, with the commissioner, of course. Of course. <laughs> but, you know, that'd be acceptable. Otherwise, that would be all right. So, mm. uh, would you say, looking towards the future, are you optimistic about the banks? Very optimistic. I think the banks will become very profitable in future. And if not, the government will have to give us some more money. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. Very much. Thank you. Well, the public are very angry about what's happened, and we have to think very carefully and say sorry for what's happened. We don't have to mean it.